Hello and welcome to the Mindful in Minutes podcast, a guided meditations podcast brought to you by Yoga for You. I'm Kelly, and today I'll be leading you through your meditation. So go ahead and get comfortable, settle in, and enjoy your meditation practice. This episode is brought to you by Anchor. Anchor is the easiest way to make a podcast, and it's the tool that I use to bring you Mindful in Minutes every week. Anchor is a free creation tool that allows you to record and edit your podcast right from your phone or computer, and it will distribute your show so it can be heard on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, or anywhere else you are listening to my voice right now. And you can even monetize your show without any minimum listener and they have a new feature which is my personal favorite where you can add any song from Spotify directly into your episode. So if you are ready to take the leap and create that podcast that you've been dreaming of or you already have a show that you want to level up, you can go and download the free Anchor app or go to anchor.fm to get started today. So that's the free Anchor app or go to anchor.fm to get started today. And now, on with the episode. Hello, everyone. Welcome to this freeform episode of the Mindful in Minutes podcast. And we are going to have just a little fun today. I know the title of this episode, it's like, "Mm, I don't know, is this fun? Is this not going to be fun? I hope it's going to be fun. I think it'll be fun. Um, I wanted to I don't know if I've ever really done a freeform episode like this where I give a guided meditation some more context, but I wanted to just sort of explain what inspired this one particular meditation. So the meditation before this one in the feed, the I am whole meditation, it is a guided meditation where you are basically working on clearing your mind, coming to stillness, and then you're calling your pieces back. So it's this idea of, you know, calling back these pieces that we may have lost. And I want to dive deeper into that particular topic, like this idea of like, are we broken? Are we really broken? What do we do when we feel broken? But before we dive into that, um, one quick reminder that uh, this weekend, if you're listening when this is released this coming weekend, uh, we have the virtual retreat, the Worthy and Well Retreat, working all around self-worth and confidence and you know, moving through imposter syndrome, so many good things. Um, I would love to have you there. It's a pay what you can event. It is August 14th. That's a Sunday from 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. Um, Central Time. And yeah, I would love to have you there. It'd be really fun. So I do these virtual retreats like once a quarter. They're such a highlight of mine. So if you'd like to be there, I'd love to have you. If you can't make it, um, but you do donate, I will send you a replay as well. So let's dive into just the topic at hand. Are you broken? (laughs) Um, Spoiler alert. No, you are not broken. It is my firm belief. And I don't know who needs to hear this. I have some notes written just generally about a few things that I want to touch on. But I really just felt called um, when sharing this freeform episode to give the context behind the meditation and just share this for whoever needs to hear it. So first I want to say you're not broken. It is my firm belief that we are born whole, that you know we live whole, that we leave this earth whole, that we are whole, we are enough, that we are exactly the people that we are supposed to be, that that true self soul space that comes into this earth just all is one already and that you do not have to do anything or prove anything to make yourself whole. Now, what I will say is absolutely, I believe that we all come into this world whole. I do think, however, that the journey of life and the path that we walk often when we are living life can wear us down a little bit. It can make it so that we temporarily lose some of our pieces. Again, I don't think we're ever like fully broken, even if it feels that way. But absolutely, there can be times in which it feels like we have little fractures or fissures, or we've lost a part of ourselves. Maybe we've lost our joy, or we have, you know, lost our 
innocence or our, you know, I think about like inner child work. And I actually want to touch on a couple of different um, therapy techniques. Not that I'm a therapist, but I want to talk about the different ways in which this idea of like us being made up of different parts and unifying them, where they show up in different places, um, not only in different parts of the world, but also, you know, different schools of thought. So absolutely, as we're living life, we are moving through as humans walking our paths, writing our stories. Parts of us can kind of get, you know, maybe chipped off or lost or forgotten or left behind or put under a lot of stress. But I want to reaffirm that when you came into this world, you were absolutely whole. We have all of these pieces. And even if one quote breaks off or we feel that we lose something, that doesn't mean that we can't call it back. So in the meditation, which if you haven't done it, go do it. I mean, I'm a little biased. Obviously, I like all these meditations because I write them. Um, But this is one in particular that... It came to me really, really quickly. I write a lot of these meditations, as you know, just from my own personal experience in life um, when I'm going through particular things, just feeling this one I wrote um, several months ago, actually, and I I didn't quite feel ready to release it until now. But I was feeling very just kind of broken and run down and like lost. And so this meditation came to me very quickly. But the imagery that's in that practice is very much one of kind of like these puzzle pieces. And so you're made up of all these different parts. And some of them may just need a little extra like TLC. Some of them may have, you know, been broken off a little bit. Some of them maybe we haven't seen in a long time. And that you get to call them all back home and put the pieces of the puzzle together to create the full picture and have them returned home. Um, That is more or less the imagery working with this particular meditation. And it's just one that's kind of near and dear to my own heart because when you're practicing meditation, and this isn't a particular style, I can't say like, oh, this meditation was inspired by loving kindness meditation or is inspired by Vipassana or it was inspired by um, mantra. It's It honestly was inspired by me just kind of being a hot mess as so many of these meditations <laughs> are. Uh, that's, you know, that's the real um, inspiration is, you know, me also being a human and very much using my meditation practice as a way to anchor myself and help me return to center. And that sometimes means calling these pieces back to me. So this is imagery that I have used a lot in my meditation. And I think that it's important to honor that meditation is, again, single pointed concentration. I've said that before. I'll say it a million times again, but it's single pointed concentration and you get to choose what your point of concentration is. I think that we often overthink meditation and we're like, oh, I have to focus on my breath or I have to focus on a mantra. I have to focus on my body. I have to focus on the sensation of loving kindness or my senses. Sure, you absolutely can focus on those things, But you also can focus on something like imagining you're calling your pieces back or you can focus on asking for help or guidance. Like your point of concentration can be anything. And that is one of the many things that I love about meditation is the fact that you can pretty much use it for anything. It's single pointed concentration. You get to choose what you concentrate and focus on. And so for this particular practice, um, it's focusing on, you know, letting the parts of you return home and kind of letting that heal and become one. So a few different places that this shows up that I find to be really interesting um, is this idea. There's actually a, um, a type of therapy. I'm trying to remember which one of my lovely therapists that I've had over the years introduced me to this idea of parts theory I can't quite remember exactly which one it was. It was one that I was working with um, when I was living in Michigan. I, I, I promise she's a great therapist, but her name is Ms. is I can't uh, I can't remember her name right now. Oopsies, but I promise she was a very good therapist. But she first introduced me to this idea of parts theory, and from my understanding, again, I am not a therapist, so this is like, you know, you are not going to get your psych degree from me. 
Although, I don't know if you guys know this or not, but I actually do have a degree in psychology. That means, that tells, you know, that gives me nothing um, except for a piece of paper saying that I took some psychology classes in college. But there's this idea, it's like a parts therapy approach. And, you know, the SparkNotes version is that you potentially can be, ha- you can have these different parts of you where there maybe could be conflict or there's parts of you that maybe aren't being listened to. So the context that I learned this particular technique in was I was struggling at a time you guys, you know, heard me um, share this story. I can't quite remember which episode it it was, but I was sharing one where I was working in a very um, unhealthy and an abusive workplace. And it really, really took a toll on me uh, for years. In fact, just, you know, even to this day, every once in a while, something will, you know, pop into my mind and kind of trigger that. But I was working through this with this particular therapist, and she introduced this idea of parts therapy, where there's different parts of me. So there is, you know, the part of me, there's like, she called it like little Kelly, like the young, you know, child within me. There was also like my anger part. There was my ego part. There was my, you know, frustration part. There was my scared part. All of these different parts that make up a whole. It's almost like, you know, that it's Pixar, isn't it? Inside Out. I haven't watched that for a while, but it's like all the different feelings and emotions have their own kind of persona and they're working together, um, you know, behind all the different switches. And it's it's a really interesting movie. But it's the same kind of idea. Like there's these different parts that kind of have their little personas. And we were working with this parts therapy to talk to these different parts of me when there was, you know, a conflict more or less, or one part, you know, wasn't really being listened to. So I had to do some work on really, you know, turning inward. And again, I think so much of therapy and meditation have a lot of overlaps. Maybe that's why I you know, well, I don't know. Does anyone really enjoy therapy? I find it beneficial. It's not always not enjoyable, but, and, you know, meditation either. But I find that there's so much overlap because you need to have introspection introspection for both. So you need to be able to turn inward. You need to reflect. You need to observe what's happening within you and around you. And that's, for me, what therapy is too, being able to observe what's happening within me and around me and to be introspective, to look within, to try to connect the dots, and that that can happen in both meditation and therapy. So what I would do is I would kind of quiet my mind, and I'd do this on my own, and kind of talk to my different parts. So quiet my mind, and I would kind of call forward and be like, okay, you know, what part wants to talk? And I made this joke a bajillion times, you know, They say quiet the mind and the soul shall speak, but it's quiet the mind and everything starts screaming at you. And I think the first time I said that was in therapy, you know, to my therapist. One of my coping mechanisms when I'm feeling uncomfortable, I don't want to go somewhere is like cracking jokes. So I don't know if any of my therapists are listening to this. I'm sure you're not. But that is just one of my personal coping mechanisms. So when she was asking, you know, how when you try to talk to different parts, what happened? And I was like, well, you know. Rumi said, quiet the mind and the soul shall speak. I believe it was Rumi. And and I tried to do that and all my parts just started yelling at me. And what was happening was I wasn't giving all of my parts the chance to kind of speak and be heard. And I wasn't paying attention to all of my parts. There were parts of me that I was really trying to push down, that I was trying to ignore, I was trying to not really listen to. And this idea of parts therapy is that all of these different parts, like they're equally as important. They are just like, you know, I love pizza. So it's just like a pizza. Let's say you have, you know, these eight slices or these eight parts and it's like a finite thing. They all make up the pizza. And it's not like, you know, one slice is necessarily better than the other. They're just different. And I found that when I started working with these different parts, that there are parts I'd been ignoring or there are parts that I felt really disconnected to. In particular, some of the childhood parts, not that, you know, there's anything in particular in my childhood that, you know, would cause that. I just, there were just parts of me I was disconnected to that I hadn't been giving a lot of time 
and attention. And so when I would quiet my mind and I would just say, okay, like, you know, does any part have anything to say? I was really kind of surprised at what would come up. And I was also surprised at what didn't come up, what I was disconnected to. And it's just a very interesting idea. You know, you can you can look it up on your own time. I Again, I'm not... I am not a therapist. Uh, If you are working with a therapist, you can ask them about this. It's for me, it was really interesting. But again, this idea that we have all of these different parts and sometimes we can lose these parts or we can get disconnected from these parts. Certain parts can be under a lot of stress or pressure. And that if you give them the space that they need to either call them back or to talk to them or to even recognize that they were missing, it's kind of like I, I've i moved a lot of times, and so I think about this a lot when I am moving and all of a sudden I'm packing something, and I'll find something like way back in the back of a drawer, and I pull it out, and I'm like, oh my gosh, I didn't even realize like I still had this thing. Like I hadn't thought about it in years, probably since the last time that I had packed it up and unpacked it and put it there, and then hadn't thought about it until I was packing it up again. And I think that there's elements of ourselves, at least from my experience, where it's kind of we can put those parts of us kind of in the back of the drawer and we aren't, you know, reaching in and we don't even realize that maybe we've been missing it or that we haven't thought about it in a long time. It's just kind of slipped our mind. So that's, I guess, in a, you know, Spark Notes version, a little bit of parts therapy. Okay, so be honest, when was the last time that you thought about electrolytes? For me, it had been a while, probably not since my college days when I was playing sports. But lately, I've been trying to move my body a little bit more. I've been, you know, not to brag, I've been hitting the gym. I've also been running a little bit outside, and it is hot where I am right now in the summer. And that is why I love Element. So Element is a tasty electrolyte drink. It really is tasty. I personally like the watermelon um, flavor, so file that away. It has everything you need and nothing that you don't. So it has lots of salt and no sugar. It has the science-backed electrolyte ratio of 1,000 milligrams sodium, 200 milligrams potassium, and 60 milligrams magnesium. It has none of the junk, no sugar, no coloring, no gluten, no BS, none of that stuff. Um, and I didn't realize this, but electrolytes facilitate hundreds of functions in the body, including the conduction of nerve impulses, hormonal regulation, nutrient absorption, and fluid imbalance. And I had been noticing with my runs that I was getting some headaches and some muscle cramps. So I have found that these have improved since I've been taking Element. And right now, Element is offering my listeners a free sample pack with any purchase. That's eight single serving packets free with any Element order. This is a great way to try all eight flavors, but you're going to like the watermelon or share Element with a salty friend. Get yours at drinkelement.com slash MIM. This deal is only available through my link. So you must go to D-R-I-N-K-L-M-N-T dot com slash M-I-M. So switching gears now, another piece of inspiration that went into this meditation in particular is the Japanese art form of kintsugi. I believe it's pronounced, but, you know, my lovely, beautiful Japanese listeners, um, if I totally butchered it, please let me know. I want to learn. So this art form kintsugi, that's the one where if you're unfamiliar with it, um, pottery traditional pottery is broken and then it is put back together and there are these it's like put back together with gold so I believe that the name means like golden repair or golden jewelry it's made from these two different Japanese words I think jewelry and and golden repair I believe Uh, the first time that I heard about kintsugi was from a student of mine when I was leading a 200 hour teacher training and I, I don't remember exactly what we were talking about, but I remember Rachel was the student's name. And she said, you know, she brought up this idea and she was sharing something, you know, very personal and how there's times where you can be broken. But sometimes when you bring the pieces back together and you call them back and you more or less like heal them or reform them to yourself using this golden imagery that it can become more beautiful than even before. And that has always stuck with me, this idea of having kind of like these golden threads or this golden 
you know, this golden thing that is bringing the pieces back together. And, you know, if you hold it up to the light, maybe you can see some of the gold or you can see the cracks through it. But that's part of what makes it so beautiful. And then this idea of like, quote, well, you know, are you broken? Am I broken? Yes and no, because you do come into this world whole and perhaps there are times in which you can feel like you are broken or something can break you, but you can always bring the pieces back together. And sometimes in that reunification of the different pieces to the self using this gold for me in my meditation practice, that gold is going to be either imagery of gold, imagining this healing, or it's going to just be the internal process of bringing these pieces back together and letting them be Sort of welded and you know drawn back together and that that sometimes can make something even more beautiful and unique than what we started with and there is a way to turn some of these you know these pains and these breaking points into something really beautiful and this idea of kintsugi is just always it's always stayed with me and how we can call these different pieces back. And so that's the other piece that really went into the meditation is kind of this imagery of these different pieces coming together using gold to heal them or to kind of, you know, let them come together and become one. So a way that you can work with this in your own personal meditation practice, again, of course you can use the practice that I shared, you know, it was yesterday as this is being released, but you can also use your own intuition. I think sometimes when it comes to meditation, we get into our own way by overthinking it of being like, oh, am I quote doing this right? Which I have a whole episode on that. I'm pretty sure it's called, am I meditating the quote right way? But use your intuition. So if you are in those places where you're feeling broken or you're feeling run down, you're feeling like you've lost a part of yourself, Try to call them back or try to tap into those places during your meditation. So just take a few deep breaths, quiet the mind, turn inward, take inventory of what pieces do I have. So for me, an avid puzzler, although I haven't done a puzzle in a while, I think that's one thing. We always hear moms and they're like, oh, the one thing I really miss about my life before having children. Honestly, for me, and maybe this is like the silliest thing ever, I just miss doing puzzles <laughs> I don't have a good spot um also uh, this is I, hopefully the only tangent I'm going to go on and then I'm going to circle it back you guys were cracking me up the other day so my, I was actually like laughing out loud in a coffee shop I love to chat with you know people I don't love to chat but I often chat with the baristas there and you know I try to just like, I feel like that's such a thankless job sometimes. It's like you place your order and then they make your coffee and then you give them kind of this like quick like, okay, thanks. And then like, you know, blast out the door and it's like they're working really hard. And so I try to just, you know, ask them how their day is going. And so I was chatting at this bar. I used to at one of my favorite cafes. I've been doing a lot of work there. And I was, I typically order an Americano. I either order an Americano or a pour over. I never want room for cream, even though they're always so nice. And they ask me, I don't want room for anything in it. And I kind of joked and I was like, oh, can you tell like a certain person based off their coffee order, like, you know, what kind of, you know, a person they are, like do certain types of people order certain types of coffee? And she was like, well, it's funny because the kind of people that order Americanos are either people that have kind of like a don't give a, you know, what attitude or they're like really cool and edgy. And then she and I had this like very, very, you know, big authentic laugh over like how I obviously wasn't the edgy one. And so I put, I threw it up on an Instagram story and I was like, my barista says there's two types of people, although I've learned there's a third, that I told the story already. I don't know. I apologize if I've already told it. But anyways, I was like, there's these two types of people, you know, the one that has a, I don't give a, you know what attitude and the cool edgy chick and like 40% of you said that I fell in the edgy category. And if any of you, so I was actually laughing and I showed the barista and then she was laughing. If any of you genuinely think I'm edgy, I think I have deeply misrepresented myself. <laughs> I truly, the one of the things that I miss about my like, you know, 
single, like, no kids life was being able to quietly do a puzzle while I watch, like, Netflix in the background or listen to an audiobook and work on a puzzle and, like, eat snacks and hang out with Mila. That was, like, the wildest thing I did, and that's, like, the one thing I miss about, like, my wild, like, pre-motherhood life. But anyways, so I do, I really, really love a puzzle. I also learned from that Instagram poll that there is a third category of person who orders an Americano and it's 100% the tired mom that's like, I just need something that is like fast and strong. And that, I think that's actually the one that I I fall into. Um, But anyways, that's my coffee order. And I just love puzzles. I love this idea of, you know, there's these different parts, these different pieces, and sometimes when you just look at an individual part of a person or of yourself, maybe you look at this one piece of you and it just gives you this tiny little snapshot of one little part of you. You look at like your your ego or you look at your, you know, child, your inner child, or you look at your joy and you're just getting this little snapshot, a little piece of the puzzle but when you call these pieces together and some of them are easier to see than others you take you know one look at this one piece and you go oh I know that part is you know part of the sky I like to do you know nature puzzles anyways that's like what I did for literally the last like two months of my pregnancy because I had to quarantine and I like couldn't move I just like sat and like did puzzles it was that part was really nice and Sometimes you can tell what the piece is, but sometimes you have to put it together. You have to give it more context. But I love this idea that, like, you can take these different pieces and, you know, individually they might be nice and beautiful. But when you put them all together, they give you the full picture and that we can have these seams. We can have these different parts of us, right? We can have these broken pieces of pottery that we can put together with gold to create something more special, more beautiful than ever before. And that they're still the same parts. And they're so special. They're still a part of us. Even if they've been lost, we can call them back and we can put them back together. So I don't know who needed to hear that, uh, my TED Talk on being broken, but it's something that I think about a lot. It's something that I reflect on a lot in my own practice. It's something that comes up a lot in trainings. Often people will come to meditation at times where they feel like they are broken. They feel like they're missing something. They feel like they're lost. And I know that a lot of people come to it. I mean, that's uh, when I particularly found meditation. It was, you know, in a tricky stage of life. I know a lot of you come here because you have sleepless nights or something is keeping you up. You're working on something specific. You're feeling lost. You're feeling broken. And I wanted to just share this in case you needed to hear it. And it's something that I know just comes up. A lot, a lot of people go on retreats um, with me during those times of transition or wanting to find something and call it back. And you absolutely can call it back. I encourage you, you can just play with it, even if this doesn't particularly like resonate with you. During your meditation, just check in with your different parts, see what's going on beneath the surface and think about, you know, what might be missing? What might be that thing, that part of me that I have shoved away in that drawer that I haven't thought about in years. And like, can I bring that back? Can I call it back, dust it off and, you know, reunite it with me. And just remember that you are whole, that you came into this world whole. You will leave this world whole. You don't need to do anything. You don't need to prove anything to anyone. You're already fully enough. Um, And if you're feeling called to do some of this parts work, you know, have at it. I hope it is useful to you. If not, you know, thanks for spending some time with me. Uh, We're going to close out the episode with something that I've been enjoying and it it seems like you guys are enjoying it too and that is with the uh, listener question. So this one comes from Marty and Marty's question and this is going to be twofold. The question also the thing that is bringing me joy. So Marty was wondering if I am a reality TV fan. If so, what do I watch? So I am a reality TV fan and right and this is... (laughs) my last like piece on parts work, but different things can exist in the same space. I can be a meditation teacher and also sometimes I can enjoy sort of tuning out and indulging in some great reality TV. I don't watch a ton of it. I haven't been watching a lot of TV at all the last like year or two, but I have to say that I do watch The Bachelor and The Bachelorette. It just, I, I enjoy it. I watch it, you know, my husband and I watch it together, Mila and I will watch it, Um, you know, so if anyone else is an avid, um, you know, part of Bachelor Nation, let me know because I don't really have anyone to talk to about it other than, 
you know, the people that I watch it with, so my dog and my husband. Uh, but I really like it. I, I've i dabbled a little bit in some Housewives, a little bit. Um, I used to, when I watched more TV, I'd watch a little more reality TV. It's kind of all fallen a little bit lower on the priority list, but I just cannot give up that Bachelor and that Bachelorette. I don't know. It's just like my simple little guilty pleasure. So that's really, <laughs> that's the reality TV that um, that I watch. And, you know, and fun fact, since Michelle Young and I, um, you know, we live in the same general area. So, you know, I don't know, sometimes our, well, my path hasn't crossed with her. What actually happened was a one time my husband ran into her at a Vikings game and she was like, you have beautiful blue eyes. She wasn't like hitting on him. Um, he was like, oh my gosh, Michelle, my wife's going to be so, you know, excited and so jealous. Can we take a picture together? They took a picture together and my husband does have very blue eyes. So does pork chop. And she was like, oh, wow, look, like your eyes look really blue in that picture. And now he will not let me forget that one time Michelle Young took a picture with him and commented on his blue eyes. So it inflated his ego a little bit. Um, And then the thing that is currently bringing me joy, it is the same thing. I need to share this thing that is bringing me joy. And it is a podcast. If you do enjoy The Bachelor and Bachelorette, I know you probably weren't expecting this podcast talking all about bringing our broken parts back together. But I, you may not have seen this twist and turn, but here we are. If you enjoy podcasts and you enjoy The Bachelor and The Bachelorette, you have to listen to She's All Batch. It is absolutely, it is, I, it's The Bachelor podcast that I listen to. It is bringing me so much joy. Stephanie and Jackie over there, love them, adore them, love their show. It is so great. You need to check it out. You can listen to it like on every platform. It's in all the places. And they do these like bachelor encounters. I find it to be very fun. It's like this segment and people like write in when they had encounters with them. Um, I did tell Stephanie about the time that, you know, Ben ran into Michelle and she thought his eyes was beautiful and blue and now he'll never let me forget it. For some reason, that one didn't make the cut though. I don't know. It didn't make the show, (laughs) but I did send it in. And it's just It's lovely. They have a YouTube channel. I've been loving the YouTube channel. And they have these really great interviews where they ask like contestants things that I feel like other podcasters won't ask them. And it's just a fun, lighthearted listen. And sometimes we need that. Sometimes we just need a good, fun, lighthearted podcast to go with our just secret little lovely reality TV indulgence. So if you are also someone who loves meditation and The Bachelor, which I happen to be that type of a person, you need to go listen to She's All Batch. I really have been enjoying it. So go send them a little bit of love. Of course, I will link to all of their things in the show notes. And they also, I'll just say, like from a podcasting standpoint, I think they just put together a really great show. And I have a lot of respect for that. I know how much work goes into podcasting. So they're just, you know, those two ladies over there just bringing me a little weekly um, dose of joy. And it makes me feel like I have someone to kind of talk about the show with. So and that is, you know, we really took a hard left turn there. But if you are like me and you like both meditation and the bachelor bachelorette then this is like you know i know you're still here listening to me because you're like um yeah i like these things and yeah that's it so that is the listener question that's also the thing that is bringing me joy again i will link to them in the show notes at all the places i'm just loving it and i hope that wherever you are that you are having the most wonderful day and that you are finding little bits of joy. And if there's a part of you that is feeling lost or you haven't connected with in a while, that you are calling it back and reconnecting with that. And just thanks for listening. And thanks for being a part of this community and letting me share what I love. Okay, bye.